A little preamble to my sermon. Um, I got that text yesterday morning from Pastor Gertner. Hey, not feeling good at all. Can you put a sermon together? So I always mean it, but I really mean it today. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. So this week we continue that journey uh, through, that journey with Jesus, that walk in faith, you know, the, the little pins you put in the, in the narthex. Yesterday I put fear. That was the, the word I was thinking about. Um, we focus today on Ruth. Ruth and, you know, her, her mother, Naomi, as they were going to leave the country and Ruth was going to tell, you know, or Naomi was going to tell Ruth to, uh, to stay with her, her homeland. These words are the texts that I want to focus on. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. So far, our text. So as we continue this sermon series, this journey with Jesus, sometimes on that journey, it is clear what God's direction, what his words are saying to us. Like last week in the story of Abraham, Abraham heard the clear word of God. He heard the call of God, what he was to be, the father of a great nation. Wasn't clear the path, but the direction and God's word for him was clear. Other times in our lives, though, God's will is a little less clear. Sometimes God may seem silent in our life, maybe not even involved in this journey that we're on. Sometimes God speaks directly to us through his word, and sometimes he speaks indirectly to us through those he puts in our lives, through the relationships that we have with others. That's the word we want to focus in on as we dig into Ruth relationship. There are two specific relationships I want to focus in on in this book of Ruth and Ruth's journey. The first is the relationship between Naomi and Ruth, a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. And the second relationship I want to focus in then on is Ruth and Boaz. But before we get into those relationships, let me give you a little synopsis, a reminder of what the book of Ruth tells us. Ruth is set in that time where the children of Israel have made it to the promised land, and it's that, that same time when the book of Judges comes to us. That the Judges, that story, that consistent time when the Israelites are with God, they're moving in the direction he'd have them, and then they lose their direction. And they need a judge to be sent to bring them back in line to where God would have them go. That's the time that Ruth is written. So there's a famine at this time in the promised land. And Ruth, or in, uh, Naomi and Elimelech um, decide to leave Bethlehem. Elimelech, the husband, Naomi, the wife, and they have two sons. So they leave Bethlehem in search to survive, basically, in search of food. And they go to Moab. When they got to Moab, Elimelech died. And Naomi's two sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. These are the two daughters-in-law of Naomi now. And then the two sons both die. So here is Naomi with these two daughters-in-law with no direction all three of them being widowed. And God was seemingly silent when all of this was happening. Why did God allow the famine to happen in the promised land? Why did they have to leave the promised land in order to find food? Why did God allow all three of the men in their lives to die? And now, what would God have them do? Is that where you are today on your journey? Does God seem to be silent? 
Are you in that valley of hopelessness and despair? Why did God take that loved one? Why are you laying in a hospital bed waiting for a diagnosis? Why did God take that perfect job that you used to have? Why isn't God speaking clearly to me right now for the direction in my life? Naomi did not see God's plan in her life or the life of her daughters-in-law. So she decided to go back to Bethlehem, but encouraged her two daughters-in-law to stay there in their land. Orpah did this. She stayed. But Ruth would not. And she said those words of our text, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you, for where you go I will go, and where you lodge I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. God seemed silent, but he offered encouragement, he offered hope, through the relationship that Naomi and Ruth had with each other. The future was not clear, but their love and their encouragement for each other was palpable. I remember a time in my life when I was really seeking God to speak to me directly, and he just seemed silent. This was when I was considering this whole new vocation of pastor. And I wanted the assurance that I had God's call into the ministry, but God just seemed to be silent. I finally, in desperation, went into Pastor Genevuk's office and I said, all right, how do you know if you've been called? And he said, listen to the people around you. God will make it clear. A few days later, I went on a shut-in call with then Vicar Woodfin, Pastor Genevuk and myself, we went and visited Bill Cattell, who had just celebrated his 90th birthday. Pastor Genevuk, I remember asking him, Hey, Bill, did you have any regrets over these 90 years? And Bill clearly stated only one. Forty years ago, I thought about joining the ministry, and I didn't. God spoke to me indirectly, but very clearly. That's how relationships work. God uses people to be his hands, his feet, sometimes his mouth. And sometimes you get the gift of that very obvious nudge, but sometimes in your journey, you just have to cling to faith because the path is not clear. Naomi and Ruth journeyed on, not knowing God's plan for their life. But they did journey on, trusting God and leaning in on that love and encouragement that they offered to each other. When they returned to Bethlehem, Ruth cared for Naomi. She went to the fields and gleaned what was left so that they had food to survive. That's where our second relationship begins. You see, Boaz owned those fields that Ruth was gleaning in. Boaz was a distant relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. He was a man of means, and he watched over Ruth. Boaz used what God had given him to love and to care for someone in need. Boaz did not ignore this woman who was in need, but had a relationship of care and a relationship of protection. Are you on a journey with God where he has provided you with much? But do you keep it for yourself and not look for a relationship of where you can care for others? As you go, do you keep your eyes on your own things, the material things? Or do you keep your eyes out looking for those who are in need? Or are you one on your journey where you are in need, but you're too proud to ask for help? When you don't ask for help, you neglect someone the opportunity to minister to you, to be God's hands and God's feet. 
That's the beauty of how God has created us. He did not create us to be hermits living alone in a shack by ourselves on a distant mountain. He created us to be in relationship with one another and in relationship with him. It reminds me of what I know is Janet McLaughlin's favorite hymn. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. When we are called to part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. This glorious hope revives our courage by the way, while each in expectation lives and waits to see the day. For sorrow, toil, and pain, and sin, we shall be free, and perfect love and friendship reign through all eternity. Throughout the entire book of Ruth, God appears to be silent. He never directly speaks. He never directly acts until the very end. Ruth 4, and there's only four chapters. Verse 13, And the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. The relationship of Boaz and Ruth turned into a marriage, and they had a son. God seemed silent. God seemed not to be directing. But oh, was he directing. He was fully in control, even though they could not see or hear his plan. Ruth and Boaz named their son born in Bethlehem, Obed. Obed had a son whose name was Jesse. And Jesse had a son whose name we know as King David. God is in control, brothers and sisters. Often at the end of a sermon here, this is where I'll point you to the cross and point you to Christ who died for your sins and loved you beyond a love that we can even understand. That son of David, Jesus, who hung on that cross for you. But as I was reminded by Dale Meyer at Arcadia, I love that our cross is empty. Because that same son of David is the son of God. And he's not on that cross anymore some 2,000 years later. He is sitting at the right hand of the creator of the universe. And he is in absolute control. That is the gospel good news that I want you to hear today. Sure, look to the cross, but look to heaven and see an awesome God in control even when he seems silent, even when it doesn't make sense of what his plan is for you. Jesus Christ reigns and is in control, even when it's very hard to see. So take heart, children of a living God, Jesus Christ is mightily at work. Today, in this journey that you are on, he may seem distant, he may seem silent, but trust me, he is not. He is in control. You may need to be just like the book of Ruth and not see his hand in your lives through the days of your life until the very end. But Jesus is not sitting watching. He is active and in control today of your life. And that's why I love this psalm. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. God is in the midst of you. 
She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. That's our God. That's our all-powerful God. The Lord of hosts is with us today. The God of Jacob is our fortress today. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation to the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Children of God, be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.